I think that one appearance was enough for everybody to see that you don't belong in the KX team. Hello, everyone. Hey, Coach Fisher, we've got some uh, questions for you. Leading the way is Brent Zwerman. Hi, Coach. Wanted to ask you about the op opt-outs of Jamon and Anthony. And, and it, if those caught you off guard at, at all, and also who are some of the guys who are stepping up in those roles in their absence? Uh, I mean, listen, I, I don't mean this. Yes, I mean, they always keep you off guard because you hate to lose those guys. But at the same time, all the things that have happened out there today in this world in, in the recent times, there's so many different things, the way they affect young men, the way they affect families. And we don't always know the family effects that they've had and what those families have dealt with, not just from each of them, but, you know, aunts, uncles, grandmas, grandpas, moms, dads, brothers, sisters. That's all. Probably, there's a lot of things that happen. So we wish those guys nothing but the best. But, you know, we'd love to have them. But at the same time, we understand and respect everything they do because both guys are outstanding. I mean, they're outstanding students. They're outstanding people. have done a great job for us. But that's just the times we're in right now. I mean, it's, it's unprecedented times and things like this from – Guys that could, could test positive to opt in out. There's just things you got to be prepared for as a coach right now that you know, you're trying to do as best you can. And, you know, guys that have stepped up, a lot of our receivers, I mean, whether Hez was there, I think Jalen Preston's had an outstanding camp, Cam Brown. I think our receivers have done a really good job. Caleb Chapman has been really good. And we moved guys all in Chase Lane, Moose, uh, Damon, uh, you know, Dalen Wright has done well, well. Uh, Devin's been banged up a little bit, but he's been, you know, when he's played Kenyon, I mean, all those guys have all played and done well, and plus our tight end packages and the things we have. So, you know, we have plenty, and those guys have, and we've practiced without Jamon for a long time now. It's not like having him, but at the same time, those guys have really taken advantage of their opportunities. And linebacker wise, I mean, when you look at it, I mean, you know, you hate to lose Anthony, but, you know, Aaron Hansford's really had a good camp. Aaron can rush, he can play, he's athletic as, as heck. And Edgerton Cooper's had a really good camp. Antonio Doyle as well, of course, Buddy's being Buddy. Of course, Chris Russell, Andre White, those guys have all done a good job. Terry and Lee, KK, I mean, all those guys. So, we, you know, you have enough. You hate to lose anybody. But at the same time, those guys have had really good camps or play them well and, and uh, make them plays. I guess from a practical standpoint, it's a little bit frustrating when a guy eats up quite a few reps in, in camp and then no. exits less than a week to a game. I don't think it's because the way we practice in camp, everybody's getting the same amount of reps. There's not a rep that we couldn't be given. They're all got the same amount. We practice ones, twos, threes, and fours. And I, I know people don't – they literally get the same amount of reps. If you're a four or you're a one, by the way we practice. So, from that standpoint, he didn't eat any reps up. And, like I say, that's the time. And those decisions and the way things affect people happen at different times, and we respect that. And, no, I don't think that hurt us at all. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Chip Howard from Sports Talk. Jimbo, what is it about uh, Derek Mason's defensive schemes that seem to give so many teams trouble? They're extremely diverse, extremely technical, extremely well coached, and they're disciplined in what they do, and they play very hard and physical. I mean, other than that, I mean, knows how to call it. I mean, knows how to leverage you, knows how to pressure you, knows how to um, – make you do things you don't always want to do, trying to force you into different things in which you, you, know, you don't always want to do the easy way out. Everything is a fight. He makes you earn every yard. There are no gifts. Something, you know, you always say as an offense coordinator, look, well, you, if you got that and you got that, you know, there's some yards there I can get consistently in that that I feel good about or I ought to have a good shot. You don't find him with there. It's, 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 he's done a great job. And then you combine Ted Roof, who I've known Ted a long time, coached against him. Ted is a very good football coach, too. And you combine those two guys and what they're doing, it's a very difficult preparation. And then their players play hard and they're very physical. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Next, we'll move on to Travis Brown from the Bryan College Station Eagle. Hey, Coach. How are you? Fine. How are you? Doing well. Hey, uh, I know uh, a lot of talk about Anias moving to running back. Has there any with, – with Jamon opting out and, and some uncertainty, has there been any conversations about him being used any differently than running back? Or is it just – I know – talk. No, about he's, he's our running back, and there's packages and things he can do, but that's where, he, that's where he'll play. Okay. And I know talking to his dad, a lot of it was about finding mismatches with him. Is that still – Kind of the yeah, I mean, it, well, it's just like you do in football. I mean, you're always trying to find guys. Your tight end is a mismatch. It's a receiver in a mismatch. You move guys around. That's why you like to see receivers play multiple positions and not play one to create mismatches, whether it's size, speed, issues, and what you got. I mean, that's, that's the game of ball. And Anias is a very versatile player and allows you to create mismatches. There's no doubt in my opinion. So, yes, I mean, that, but that goes for everybody we have. But, you know, Anias is very, very – uh, attuned at that and understands because not only does he have physical skills, he has great mental skills. The ability to learn and, 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 and to retain is, is pretty amazing. 
Mm-hmm. And, and then just uh, heading into game week, how are you health-wise, both COVID and injury-wise? Right now we feel really good. I mean, you know, you're, you're getting tests constantly, so those change every day. I mean, you wait for the test to come in and you keep your fingers crossed. And But right now we're relatively healthy and, and good with where we're going. So, you know, look forward to moving forward and getting ready to play this first game. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. Next question is from Gabe Bach from TexAx.com. Yeah, Jimbo, on Hansford, can you take us through his emergence here? And, and did he win that job in camp? And can you just walk us through the kind of camp that Hansford had for you at linebacker? You know, Hansford's had a great camp, and we've kept a great rotation. See, see, here's the thing. We've rotated so many guys with different groups now, and it's helped them develop because we were saying, okay, if so-and-so's out, let's put him with this, see how they react and communicate. We've interacted guys as much as we humanly can do and probably as much as I've ever done with twos moving to ones, threes moving to twos, threes even moving to ones. Say you lost two guys. We'd say, okay, for three, for 20 minutes a day, let's see how they react. And, you know, maybe if you get guys around and tell them what to do, they can even enhance their abilities. We have done that all over because you're trying to, to play for the unexpected. And, but Hansford has really blossomed in that. No, Anthony was doing great, and, uh, and, and, but Aaron's doing really well too. All right, next question is uh, Chris Uriken from the Associated Press. I was wondering, after everything that's happened over the past few months, what's the feeling now that you're getting close to the game and it, it's almost upon you? And was there a time where you wondered if y'all would even get to play this season? You know, there was a slight time. I was pretty optimistic about it. I really was. There was a slight time in there that I wondered. I mean, because you always, as I say, look at what, you know, if this happened or that happened, because you had to have a plan for your team, what you would do in the fall with them, what, how would you train, what would, would you be able to – have any practices would you be allowed to practice or would you not and how you could train guys and not let them because they had so much time off in the spring and training their bodies so there was a time there when I got to planning all that and I said man think about what you're planning for but then I got back to looking at things I've been very optimistic about it and it does I mean it's um it's very exhilarating I mean kind of get your juices flowing ahead we're getting back to at least a little bit of normality and getting to play a game and for these kids you see the look in their eye and the bouncing their steps and and you, and you see why they love it so it, it, it to me it gets me going as a coach Next question is from Brian Prony with uh, 247. Hey, Coach. I know uh, you guys like to keep us on our toes with the depth chart, and we probably shouldn't read too much into it, but we've heard a lot about DeMarvin Leal this uh, this fall camp, and right now he's listed as a second team or with a, with a true freshman of Braden Mowry. What should we expect to see uh, from him this season, and should he be second team? Is he a starter? No, oh, Leal is playing as well as anybody we have. I'm, I'm going to say that. He's doing a great job playing great he'll be playing tons there'll be tons of rotation and right now the depth chart like I said they asked me for a depth chart I said why are you giving me one because it's going to change every day I'm not I'm, I don't put a lot of stock in everything you see there as far as you know we put things in there what they're going to be what they can be I mean it's not a big deal and I, depth charts aren't huge to me I mean I hate to say that uh, because we play so many guys in the rotations go I look at guys there's there's multiple starters and multiple guys that you know will play volume of how the game goes or what personnel groupings win. But, no, Lee Al has been outstanding in camp, outstanding. What, uh, do you see him playing more inside or outside? Yes. All right. <laughs> I'm not trying to be smart, but – No, I, I understand. I, 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 if I can't answer the question, I'm just going to say yes. I mean, but, but that's what gives you the versatility. And the, way, and the way you have to put packages together and things, but that's the truth, yes. I mean, he'll be doing both. Next question is from Tyler Shaw from KBTX. Hey, Coach, uh, you talked about Vanderbilt's defense, so, um, you know, they, they could cause some trouble. When you're looking at the, the off, this offense, especially the wide receivers, how young they are, what do you expect and what are you going to be looking for out of them in week one? Oh, you're going to get multiple coverages. You're going to get blitzes. They're going to test you. They're going to jam you. They're going to zone you. They're going to – I mean, they're going to they're going to rotate safeties. They're going to rotate – I mean, from three to three buzz, to three, three bonus. I mean, they're going, they're going to quarters you. They're going to trap you. I mean, it's very multiple. And the good thing about that is our defense does a lot of the same things as far as the multiplicity of things you do. So what you practice against daily is really good. We always still do good on good a bunch. And we have, you know, had all camp and we always do during the season. So hopefully that'll help. But, I mean, they'll challenge them not only physically, but they'll challenge them mentally also. Next question is from Owen Buchanan from TechTax.com. Hi, Jimbo. Um, how can uh, how can you uh, deal with the uh, the opt outs and some of the injuries y'all have and and still be 
I, I guess, optimistic that this team can be as good as, you know, y'all originally thought maybe it could be? Well, because I think we've built depth. We've, we've recruited well for two years, three years. I mean, uh, gotten good classes in. Our, I like our energy. I like the development of our players. And, I, and we're getting more depth. And, I, and, and you know, of course, but, you know, during the season, what if they opt out and what if they got injured? What's the difference? I mean, I say that. I mean, one you're playing, one you're not. But, I mean, those are things as a coach you deal with and you try to plan for. And I think it's the – the part of it is that I'm very encouraged about our younger guys that are stepping into those roles and how they're accepting those challenges. I mean, like you say, it is, I mean, you hate to lose guys, but sometimes it becomes opportunity for somebody else behind you. And, you know, we've, we've, we've recruited well, we got good players and those guys are accepting our coaches doing a good job with them. Those guys are learning how to play at a, at a very good level. And do you know the five guys that you're going to start in your offensive line on Saturday? Mm-hmm. Are they the same guys that are on the death chart? <laughs> <laughs> All right, your next question is from <laughs> Mark Passwaters from Rivals.com. Hey, Coach. Um, after that tough question from Olin, I don't know where to go, but uh, I, th I think I'm going to piggyback off of something that Brent said uh, okay. earlier. Oh, uh, now, 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 you understand what road you're going down now? Dad, go. I know, it's dangerous. <laughs> but, you know, uh, bear with me on this one. Uh, basically, I just wanted to get back to the linebacker situation and see what your confidence level is with these guys because it seems like there are a whole lot more names getting mentioned this year than in past seasons. Well, yeah, I mean, guys have been in the system a couple of years and were very talented but had to learn what to do and the way they're doing things. I mean, when you look at Hansford now, that's his third year and he's gotten back over there on defense and done a great job. I mean, when you go with White, Russell, Lee, those guys have all been in there. Buddy's played inside and done an outstanding job. KK's been here, done a good job. And then you sign two really good players in Cooper and Doyle. So all those guys have done it. They feel good. I mean, I mean, are they perfect? No, we're never, we're never happy with, every, with anything as far as that goes and what we're development is. And they'll continue to get better. But, man, you have size, you have athleticism, and, you, and they're playing with good consistency and they've played well in camp. Good Thanks, body, a, lot of, a lot more bodies. Yeah. Next question is from Mike Lucas at KAGS. How you doing, Coach? Fine. How are you? Hey, Coach, with such a long lead up to this first game and prolonged practice, summer camp, all that stuff, do you expect the execution to be on par with the first game of the season or would you expect your team to be a little more crisp in what they're trying to do? Well, I, ho I hope it's very crisp. I say, hey, if I, if I could answer that, I'd sleep better. <laughs> you always worry about it as a coach on your first game and in, in any game. I mean, that's part of coaching. You think you got them ready. Do you have them ready? Do you know? But I think our guys have done a good job. And all you can go off is how you've practiced and the way you've scrimmaged and those situations. And we've done a nice job. It's been a really good camp. I've been, I've been pleasantly. And the good thing about it, I, I see the improvement each and every day. And I know you say that, well, you should. But sometimes you don't. You hit laws. You hit things. And sometimes you go backwards every now and then, you know, and what goes on. But our guys have, have continued. And I think we're hitting our stride at the right time. Next question is from Zach Taylor, Brian Broadcasting, and then we'll go to Chuck Carlton. Hey, Jimbo. Appreciate you coming on with us. Um, for Saturday, I know there's still so much in the air. You haven't been able to go in front of um, a, a capped capacity, but for you, what do you feel like the atmosphere is going to be at Kyle Field Saturday? Whatever we make it. And, that, and that's, that's our job as coaches and players to make it the atmosphere. That's what we have to worry about right now. We can't depend on the crowd. And, and, you sh and I don't mean this in a bad way. You should never depend on the crowd. That's just a bonus. you got to depend on yourself, your own attitude, your own demeanor to create the atmosphere for yourself as a player. You can't rely on them to get you there. They help you. They bonus you. You love them. You want to play well for them. And that all is energetic. But at the same time, as a competitor and athlete, you have, to, you have to bring your own energy and your own abilities to focus, concentrate, and play at a high level. Thanks. Thank you. Question from Chuck Carlton at the Dallas Morning News, and then we'll go to Gabe Bach. Jimbo, with, with all the youth and experience you do have at wide receiver, even though you have a lot of talent there, how, how important, yeah, I guess even more important, does Kellen and his experience and his steadying influence become with that group? Well, I think it's huge, and I think you've seen that in our practices. I mean, you're seeing a, a really good group of guys who feel that, do that, and have done a really good job. And the way he's affected them and the communication levels he's had with them, and it's been excellent. I'm telling you, it really has. It's, it's been a really good camp, and he's done a good job in, in that regard. And even, you know, in our, the few older guys we have, and they, they, those guys are bought in, man. They learn well, and they're athletic. Next up is Gabe Bach from TexX.com, and then Robert Cessna. 
Jimbo, I wanted to ask you about you've been a little thin at some injuries at tight end. I understand you mm -hmm. moved Plumrick over there. He's moved around a lot, but how much credit do you give him for just fighting for trying to find his spot? And then well, what kind of impact do you think he's going to make? It, it has, and I think we you know our backs have hit a good stride there. And his body type, being six foot five, man, he can run. He's athletic. And I'm going to tell you, Plumrick's tough now. He'll put his face on you, he'll hit you. He's competitive. And being a quarterback, you pretty much know all the assignments. That's the thing that's been very good in being allowed him to move. As far as, you know, you teach him to pass game. Well, he knows it because he was a quarterback and knew where they were going to be and the things that happened in that regard. So, and I think he's learned to block. He's done a really good job. You know, you wonder how, how we block, but he was playing running back. And at running back, sometimes a lot of your assignments in your spread stuff become very similar to what the tight ends are by the rules of how you do things. And he understands that and has adapted very well. And, and I, I've really been impressed with the way he's played. I really have. Next up is Robert Cessna from the Brown College Station Eagle and then Chip Howard. Jimbo, did you see any difference in Kellen's demeanor or leadership when you lose when he loses Jamon, who's his best receiver and a good friend? You know something? He's been from the day he got here, this this camp hasn't changed a lick. And it's been outstanding. His demeanor, his, his, his ideas with the team, the way he's played, his personality, his influence on guys, the way he's pushed guys, it's been exactly the same. When when Jamon elected to do that, which I know it, it didn't, but I think what you saw was the maturity out of Kellen. You didn't see anything different. I'm sure inside it hurt him, and I know it did, but I think it also, you know, the responsibility he has to this program and to his other teammates, I think is a tribute to him about how he's handled that situation to me. I, I, I don't you, mean that. I'm sure inside him, you know, he hates, but it's, it's been the same Kellen the whole time. All right, let's move to Chip Howard from Sports Talk and then Brian Peroni. Jimbo, I was wondering how many games you've been able to watch these last couple of weeks and if one or two uh, things or either side of the ball has stood out, whether it's special teams or mistakes or what stood out to you as you, as you watch some of these early games? I haven't watched a bunch because we were practicing on Saturdays and not as many games on Saturday night and we're working on Sundays with, uh, you know, game planning, meeting and doing all that, uh, you know, off and on. But, I mean, it's just a typical thing. Sometimes, you know, it's always you always worry about special teams early in the season all the little things that can happen, what happens. Uh, I think offensively, you know, you, are, are, you look at some of the teams that struggle. It's been, you know, did they turn it over? Did they have pre-snap penalties? Did they have communication issues, getting plays in the game, personnels in the game, things like that? You know, you worry about blown assignments and communications on a, uh, on a game day. And you, and you see the teams that have struggled have had those. And, and then, but then at the same time, you've had some outstanding performances and how some of these guys have come out and handled camp. So hopefully they, we'll have our team ready to play and, and, uh, you know, get out of the blocks and, and finish strong the whole time. Next question is from Brian Peroni at uh, 247. Hey, Coach, I just wanted to ask about the, the running back rotation and what, you know, you're sort of expecting there. You have a ton of guys to get carries. I assume Spiller and Anaya Smith will get plenty. But what about after that? What do you see happening this week and going forward? And then I really want to specifically ask about Ernest Crownover. I know he's had a, he's had a good camp from all accounts. He's had a really good game. I mean, blocking, catching, running. He's big. He's physical. He's fast. He's good with the ball in his hand. He's done a great job. I've been pleased with all a chain has been a boy. He learns well, has great hands, can run, runs between the tackles very well. Outside, but runs both play. DeAndre Jackson's physical and tough and carries the ball. Uh, Hubbard, very talented, good with the ball in his hand, can catch. All those guys got great ball skills. They run with power. I've been I, I've been really happy with our backs. I really have. I mean, these guys have done a really good job of learning and playing and, and feel comfortable, for, especially for the freshmen. As far as they're along right now, they've been really good. Never had that many guys as freshmen or newcomers come in and, and really absorb that much and play. That You know, you usually have one or sometimes you may have two at the most. But, you know, these guys have done a good job. I mean, they're still learning, but they've done a good job. They really have. All right, let's move to Brent Zwerman from the Houston Chronicle and then Travis Brown. Coach, it seems like from the outside anyway, Buddy Johnson has been a rock for you on that side of the ball and senior leader. Mm -hmm. Could you just speak to that and how he's been for you uh, during camp and your expectations for his senior season? Well, I expect a lot out of Buddy because, you know, he, I think he demands a lot out of himself. He's had a great offseason training, the things he did, the, the learning to play middle linebacker last year. Like you say, going from outside to inside is a big change, guys. I mean, that's a big change. And being able to distribute and – the information and process the information and make decisions and fit gaps and things. He's done a great job. Uh, he's had a great off season. He has great influence on the players. Uh, he comes to work every day. He's got a great attitude and he's got a great leadership attitude and sees the big picture of what's going on and just very pleased with his performance. And we're going to play well. He needs to play well. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is from Travis Brown from the Bryan College Station Eagle. 
uh, yeah, Coach Chip, Chip mostly took my question, but uh, I'll uh, go out there and, and, and with, with a player opting out six days before the season, is, is there a constant worry as a coach that as injuries fall up, like you said earlier, other things that you, it might be a week to week thing of, of more players opting out through the season? Uh, yeah, I mean, you don't set, you can't set and worry. We tried to plan for that, but if you set and worry about that, and as I say, chase ghosts all the time, you just get a good feel for your team and what's going on and talk to the guys and, and you play. But if you set and worry about that, I mean, you'll worry yourself to death. You know, we don't see any sign of anybody else doing those right now. And we're playing well, and the guys are playing well, and they're excited to play. So you just go play. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. All right, we'll go to Daryl Breffitt, and then we'll finish up with Kurt Bowles. Coach, I wanted to know, I know you guys are honoring player scholarships when they're opting out, but mm -hmm. is there a chance that maybe you could, um, I don't know, pull a scholarship and maybe shop and try to find somebody in the transfer portal just to add more strength and depth because no, of that? No, I won't do that. No, sir, I won't do that. That's, that's their rules. That's their scholarship, and that's their right to be able to do that, and I support that 100%. I would never do that. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And we'll finish up with Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Jimbo, you're starting your third year at AM. I'm I'm curious in your mind how long it takes to establish your culture in building a new program and what's the, been the hardest thing about it? I think you're always establishing that. I think that's something you're always developing and establishing. And, and as the players – and then that trickles from the player to player, from the older guys to the younger guys. When, you, when the older guys get it and you get enough guys there for uh, – a significant amount of time that are playing significant roles as older guys and, and passing that down. And, I, and that's what I've seen in camp. That's why I've been so pleased with camp and you seem in a good mood as far as how we're doing things. You know, well, we'll go have success. We've got to play and execute. But I like this team. I like their, their attitude, demeanor, and how they communicate, and they're fun to coach. And so from that prospect, I mean, that they've got me very encouraged that our culture is developing and, and the way we want it and what's happening. Did you feel comfortable your first or second year? Like I did. I mean, you're always comfortable, but you're always wondering what, well, how is it going to go, what's going to go, and there's always changes from first yeah. or second year, and you got new guys in. Now you got more guys in your program that have been, even your younger guys that have been there now for a couple years and then one year. I think that makes a big difference. It's not always your top guys, but how that affects the young guys. Thanks, Jimbo. Thank you. All right, that's all the questions I have for you, Coach. Right. Thanks. Thank you all. Y'all have a wonderful day. Be safe. Thank you, Jimbo. The uh, first player we'll have is going to be Kellen Mond. Who has questions for Kellen? So if you have a question, just send it to me privately in the chat function. That's how we ask questions in this. So I've got questions from Gabe, from Passwater, Zach, Travis, Owen, Tyler Shaw.
Hey, Kellen, welcome to the uh, Nike Football Media Zoom. Got some questions for you whenever you're ready. First question right. is going to be from Gabe Bach from TexAgs.com. How you doing, Kellen? Happy game week. <laughs> Happy game week. Well, how have you dealt, Kellen, with, uh, with losing Jamon during camp? And what, what have y'all's conversations been like? And can you give us kind of a two-parter here? Can you give us a, a name or two that's really stepped up in his absence? Um, you know, you know, first off with Jamon, you know, me and him had conversations, you know, um, going back to probably even a week before he decided to opt out, probably maybe even two weeks and, um, just seeing where his mind was at and, you know, you know, me not being a selfish person and, you know, also being his roommate, best friend and everything, uh, you know, I always, you know, want to put his mental health first. And if he doesn't think, uh, he can be on the field at the time, then, you know, I never want to pressure anybody to, um, be back on the field, but, um, you know, you've seen a lot of guys be, uh, being able to step up, you know, Cam Brown, Chase Lane, um, Jalen Preston has really stepped up big at that X spot. Um, Hezekiah Jones has played well to me all pre uh, all camp. Um, so I've, I've seen a bunch of receivers step up, Caleb Chapman. So, um, you know, guys who don't really have as much experience as Jamon, but are super talented. And, um, you know, if we continue to work, I think we can uh, be very dynamic with the guys that we have. All right, your next question is from Mark Passwaters from Rivals.com. Hey, Kellen, uh, this question is kind of uh, going to piggyback off of Gabe's, but looking at the wide receiver core you have now, the four primary guys you had last year are all gone. Um, so how long or how difficult has it been to kind of establish a rapport with these new talented but untested players? Um, I, I think – uh, it kind of varies to kind of what we're doing and um, but that's why we we practice the way we do and you know we're trying to build that chemistry um, you know obviously with some of those guys that I had you know Buck, Kendrick, Q and Jamon last year um, we had some you know really good chemistry but um, you know with Jamon opting out and having you know Jalen Preston and some of those guys having to step up pretty early um, you know our chemistry and you know knowledge together and understanding um, you know, where the receivers like the ball and understanding what they can do um, has definitely grown with them. So just, you know, we're continuing to build that chemistry and, um, you know, everything isn't perfect right now, but, um, you know, I really, I really like where we're at right now and, you know, the way the receivers are making plays. All right. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Let's go to Zach Taylor from Brian Broadcasting. Hey, Kellen, just wanted to ask specifically about the run game. I mean, when you've got guys like, like Spiller back there um, that's now coming into his second year. I know he was a freshman last year, but now coming into his second year. And Anais is back there as well. How does that open things up for you to take advantage of the run game? Um, I mean, I think that's going to be huge and um, definitely going to help out in the pass game and, you know, both vice versa um, with the run game. But uh, just being able to be versatile, um, but also having, you know, Anais and Spiller um, back there for a second year. Um, just having their knowledge back there and also understanding blitz pickup and uh, certain blitz periods, um, which is going to be huge for us, you know, playing in the SEC, which, you know, teams, certain teams bring a lot of complicated blitzes. But um, just having that type of knowledge and uh, people back there who have um, great IQ, I think it's going to be huge going into this year. And um, obviously we got to take it one week at a time. But, you know, I feel really comfortable with, you know, Anais and Spiller back there and, um you know, and as far as the rushing game goes, I think they're going to have both great seasons and be able to uh, feed off each other a lot this year. Thanks. Next question is from uh, Travis Brown with the Bryan College Station Eagle. Hey, Kellen, how are you? I'm good. How are you? Doing well. Hey, uh, heading into the season, you are several uh, different in several different categories. You're very close to leaving here as one of a and all-time best passers in the record books. What does that mean to you to have those records so close and your time here at A&M? Uh, uh, it means a lot. And, um, you know, I've, I've been through a lot while I've been here at A&M. And um, I've set really high expectations for myself and being able to be um, so close and also, you know, allow myself to be in those record books is um, something that, you know, I wanted whenever I was a, a true freshman and something that I worked for. So um, it's going to be super exciting uh, once that time comes. But, um, you know, for me, uh, that's, you know, it's a big deal. But, you know, I, I just want to take it one game at a time and, um, you know, execute one game at a time as best I can. 
And then also, um, as a leader, when you're when you're talking with guys, and I know a lot of times uh, mottos and stuff in years past is, is talking about the buy-in of players. How do you manage leading the buy-in while also understanding when players decide that they, they want to opt out or, or, or want to do what's best for them or their family? Is that a challenging situation to be in as a team leader? Uh, I mean, I guess at times it can be, um, especially, you know, with some of those guys who opted out, you know, being my best friends and, um, you know, but I'm also, you know, I'm pretty understanding and at least, you know, I'm able to communicate with them and understand, you know, where their mindset is. And, um, but, you know, I think, you know, with the guys that we have and the way that certain guys have bought in and, um, you know, I, th I think it's, it's been really well and you could see it in the practices and, um, you know, I only look forward to us getting even, even better going into week one and then uh, from there. Thanks. Next question is from Owen Buchanan with TexAx.com. Hi, Kellen. Is there anything that you can um, put down specifically that's, that you think is different about yourself um, as a quarterback coming into this season as opposed to the last few? The last few? Um, you know, I would, I would say just, my, just a different mentality. Um, you know, me, you know, evaluating myself, you know, throughout this whole entire offseason, throughout quarantine, um, you know, I looked over – through every single play that I ever uh, ran in my junior year. Um, and I just wanted to evaluate myself and find out what I could do better and figure out the best way to, you know, um, basically improve myself. And um, so I, I'm just, you know, this year I'm on a mission and um, not only for myself, but for my teammates. And I just want to be a great leader and, um, you know, pretty much elevate everybody's self and everybody and um, take them to higher levels. And if I can ask you, uh, did you ever consider opting out? And if not, why? Uh, nah, never crossed my mind. And, you know, I don't plan on it. Thank you. The next question is from Tyler Shaw at KBTX and then Daryl Breffitt. Hey, Kellen. Uh, you've obviously know what, it, what a tough schedule looks like. You've got one ahead of you guys this year. So when you look at week one against Vanderbilt, how important is it for you guys to get out on the right foot to start the season and, you know, just to get the win? Um, I think it's super important. And um, I think it's, you know, starts that momentum uh, that we want to have. And, uh, you know, Vanderbilt's a good team. And, you know, I think they got new D coordinator this year and also um, a good head coach. So, um you know, I, you know, I'm looking forward to this weekend, but it's going to be super important for, you know, all three phases for us, um, offense, special teams, and defense, um, you know, to start off this year right and, um, you know, get a, get a head start on this season. Thanks. Let's go to Daryl Breffitt, and then we'll go to Kirk Bowles. I got uh, a couple of questions for you, Kellen. First off, um, you talked a little bit about, uh, Vanderbilt's uh, defense. Can you talk about what that's going to be like to face a new DC that they have at Vanderbilt? Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I think um, at times it can be very challenging because, you know, he may carry over the same scheme, um, but it's, you know, it's different players. So, um, you know, it's kind of hard to, I guess, watch film on, you know, that combination, but, um, you know, I think that everyone is kind of bought in on, you know, watching film and um, finding out, you know, um, you know what they're going to do. And, um, you know, but I think, you know, we'll keep it, you know, both on the off, at least on the offensive side, you know, keeping our base passes, base runs and uh, figure out what everybody's comfortable with and um, just whatever, whatever we get with the defense from the defense, you know, uh, all our principles apply. I know the first three years that you were at a and uh, I mean, you guys feed off the 12th man. Have you kind of tried to think a little bit about what that's going to be like on Saturday at 25% and some of the restrictions that you're going to have to deal with? Uh, I mean, I think that's something that um, has had a huge impact, you know, you know, pretty much all over college football. And, um, you know, I think that we're going to have a good turnout, you know, with the 12th man and, you know, Kyle Field. But, you know, it's definitely not going to be, you know, what it'd be like 100%, obviously. Um, but that that's just – uh, puts more accountability, you know, on on us as players. You know, we have to be able to create create the energy on the sideline and you know within our play. So um, it's definitely going to be challenging, but it's going to be something that we have to adapt to really fast. Hey, thank you, and thank you for the responsibility you guys are showing too. That's awesome.
Thank you. Let's go to Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman and then Chip Howard. Kellen, I'm curious about your confidence level going into your senior year. Uh, do you think you're as good as Trevor Lawrence and Justin Fields and those at the top of their game? And what do you feel like has separated your play from theirs the last couple of years? Um, you know, with me, every time I step on the field, um, you know, my mindset, I always think I'm the best player. So, um, you know, if I if I said I wasn't, then I don't think I would be doing the right thing, you know, you know, given given the my teammates' confidence. Um, mm -hmm. But that, I mean, that's that's just my mindset whenever I step on the field. But um, you know, I feel really confident going into this season, and um, you know, I look forward to you know executing game one and then moving on from there. And do you think this game would ever get here? Now that it's finally. Uh, uh, I mean, at times it de it definitely seemed like um, the season they might continue to push it back or it may get canceled. But you know. You know, my mindset this whole entire year was just make sure you're prepared, and um, you know that's that's that was my mentality this whole entire off season, and um, you know I'm ready. Thank you. Let's go to Chip Howard from Sports Talk, and then we'll go to Travis Brown. Kellen, do you have all of your offensive package in for this game, or do you put different things in depending on the opponent from week to week? Uh. I mean, we still haven't, you know, we've kind of prepared for this game, but, you know, this is this will be our main um, prepara preparation week, you know, starting today and then finishing out through, you know, Thursday and Friday. But, um, you know, we've ran probably uh, probably our whole entire offense, you know, over the uh, over all the practices and fall camp. Um, you know, you know, I think everything kind of varies. Certain things might change, um, you know, weekly. Uh, you know, with, with the offense and the way we do certain things. But, you know, I think, you know, just some of the stuff that we're going to be running, uh, you know, I think all our principles will apply and um, we just have to go out there, react and just play fast and play with confidence. How, how complicated is the offense as you would describe it? And then how difficult does that make it on some of the young receivers who haven't been through it yet? Um, I mean, I would, I would say for a beginner, I think, well, I mean, I think for a beginner, every offense is hard to learn because um, every offense is basically a foreign language. But, um, you know, once you get the details of it and once you just rep it out, once you get experience, um, and that doesn't have to be in a game, that could be in practice, um, you know, you start you start to, you know, find yourself, find your role on the team and, you know, what, what you can do and what you can do. So, um, you know, I think every offense is, can be difficult, but, um, I think this allow this offense allows you to have a lot of freedom and um you know but once you once you master that freedom then you know you, you could be a phenomenal player in this offense. Thank you. Travis's uh question was answered, so we'll move on to Gabe Bach, which is the last question on the queue. So this is it. Yeah, Callum, what can you tell us about Anias that makes him such a unique talent and, and what has been the key to him really emerging by all accounts is one of the best players you have on offense? Um, you know, I think, you know, playing in the SEC, a lot of people's um, first question was his size, um, but he plays so much bigger. And, uh, you know, in blitz pickup, anything, you know, you know, I'm not sure if all camp I've seen him, you know, lose on a blitz pickup. And that's just his, um, his mentality and, you know, his, you know, just his physical mindset and, um, you know, I've always said it was it was going to be dangerous whenever um, you have people in the backfield with you that can match the same IQ um, in the backfield. So, um, you know, for, with him being able to come from receiver and then come to running back, you know, I thought um, his transition and, you know, his just will to learn um, has been phenomenal. And, you know, I, you know, he still makes mistakes and you no, know, but that's why we're here to correct him. And um, but I mean, the way he's played throughout camp has, you know, been phenomenal. And, um you know, I, th I think he's going to still surprise a lot of people on how good he actually is, you know, um, this season. All right, Kellen, that's all the questions we have for you. Thanks. And good job. Thank you. Next up, we'll have Buddy Johnson. So if you have questions, uh, just send me a, a private message in the chat function and we'll I'll call on you and you can get your question in.
Hey, buddy, welcome to the Zoom. Got some questions for you. We'll start off with Gabe Bach from texags.com. How you doing, buddy? Hey, how you doing? Doing good. Hey, give us your, uh, your reaction to, to Hines deciding to opt out yesterday, and were you surprised by it? Were you caught off guard at all? Uh, yeah, I was a little surprised, but, you know, uh, mental health is very important. And, you know, uh, he know everyone on the team is 100% 100, 100 behind him, but, you know, I wish the best to him. And, you know, the good thing about football is it's not a one-man sport. So if I were to opt out, you know, it's a team sport and, you know, the team is ready to go. And guys in that room have prepared to play. Coach Fisher, I always talk about don't just wait to play, prepare to play. And I think guys have been doing a phenomenal job of doing that. You know, this linebacker room is fired up and ready to go. The defense is ready. So, I mean, we love Anthony Hines and we're going to miss him. He made a lot of plays for us. But we got a game Saturday we have to get ready for it. We're excited for it. The next question is from Owen Buchanan at TexasX.com and then Tyler Shaw. Buddy, tell us why you are uh, or why you can still be confident uh, with the linebacker core without uh, Anthony out there uh, next to you. Uh, because, I, like I just said, you know, guys been prepare, preparing to play, you know, guys been stepping up, you know, Aaron Hansford been stepping up. Uh, I always talk to Coach Fisher. He always compliments the younger guys, Edger and Cooper, Antonio Doyle, uh, T. Lee. These guys been stepping up big time for us, you know, just making plays. And, you know, it, it goes uh, uh, it goes back to the way they prepare, you know. They're, t they're changing, you know, their self mentally. And, you know, I love to see it. It's just like with me, uh, when Coach Elko got here, he had a talk with me. You know, I understood the talk and, you know, I had to make a change and that's what I went out and did. I think that's what, that's what uh, guys are doing. And, you know, it's, it's fun to see it. I love to see it. It's tremendous growth. And, you know, that's, that's what the coaches always talk about. They love the game so much just because of the growth from, you know, players that's not only on the, on the field, but off the field as well. What did you have to change? Just, you know, everything, the way you live, the way you go about handling your business on and off the field. That's what Coach Fisher always talks about. And, you know, it's just once you can do everything right off the field, you know, that translate back that translate back to the field. And, you know, that just take it hats off from there. Thank you. Yes, sir. Let's go to Tyler Shaw from KBTX and then Zach Taylor. Hey, buddy. Um, what? When you look at this season with being, you know, the 10 game SEC, you know, conference only schedule and, you know, it's not going to get any easier from here. How important is it for this team uh, to get out on the right foot um, here in week one and, you know, just to get that win against Vanderbilt? Uh, it's very important. It's important for us to, you know, hit the ground running and running fast. You know, I think guys are very excited to get, uh, go out and play. You know, guys are fired up. I know I am. 100%, you know, just me being on the defensive side of the ball, you know, just seeing all the uh, uh, contagious energy, you know, from one another to one another, it's, 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 it's great to see, you know, guys are fired up and ready to play. As soon as they said we was going to play, you know, guys were fired up. I know I'm ready to go. And, you know, I got uh, a bunch of guys behind me ready to go as well. And how does it feel to actually, you said, you know, you guys are actually finally get to be able to play there's probably a point this summer that maybe that was up in the air of whether you're going to play or not. Yeah, well, that's what I was just talking about. Coach Fisher, I would say don't don't wait to pl uh, play, prepare to play. You know, from from the moment that we knew we, we were going to play or even when they were saying maybe we won't, you know, we were still preparing to play, handling our business on and off the field. We still had, you know, to, to go out and handle our business. That's what we, we were here for. And, you know, guys were excited, man. I, I, I'd say that team is fired up, you know, ready to go, and I'm ready for Saturday. All right, your next question is from Zach Taylor from Brian Broadcasting, and then Chip Howard. Hey, buddy. Um, already there's been a few times where whole position groups for teams have, have contracted COVID-19. They haven't been able to play. Uh, you guys are already down a, down a man now with Anthony Hines having opted out. So how much do you talk amongst yourselves, the players, about, hey, look, we're already at a limited depth. We have to make sure that we stay healthy for this season. Uh, you know, I think guys actually understand, you know, uh, we're going to have to make sacrifices if we want to be where we want to be at the end of the day. You know, guys are doing a great job. Uh, Coach Fisher, I would compliment us about how uh, great we're doing as a team. And, you know, guys understand and guys want to be able to play. And if we want to play, we have to make that sacrifice now and then to get us where we want to be later. But, you know, guys understand. We talk to each other. And, you know, we, us, us older guys, the leaders are making sure, you know, guys are on the same page and, you know, because the younger guys, they're, they're going to want to, you know, get out there, you know, 
their freshmen in college, you know, they want to, they want to see what it's about, but you know, they understand right now, you, you know, they, they know what's important right now. You know, I think they're doing a great job at it. Thanks buddy. Let's go to Chip Howard from sports talk and then Travis Brown. Buddy, so much of defense is emotion. Uh, have you thought about Saturday and how different it will be and what maybe your responsibility is as an older guy to keep the other guys on defense uh, fired up despite uh, maybe not having a big crowd on Saturday? Yes, uh, Saturday, it might be a little different, but, you know, Kyle Field is Kyle Field. You know, I know our, our fans will be a thousand percent behind us if they could be there, but, you know, we, we're, we're going to be fired up whatever we have, but it's going to be very important for the team to bring energy because energy is very contagious. And, you know, if, if older guys are, you know, continuing to harp on the energy we're bringing in, our energy level is high, it can be very contagious for the team and we can hit the uh, ground running fast. Next question is from Travis Brown and then Kirk Goals. Hey, buddy, how are you? Good, how you doing? Doing well. Hey, I know in years past, uh, Nickelback has been a, uh, a a really successful position on, on y'all's defense. And Devin Morris, at least on the depth chart, is a guy who's slotted there at the top. What has Devin done to kind of separate himself, and how do you see him uh, fitting well into that role? Uh, may, maybe last year um, you've seen Devin make a lot of plays, you know, here and there. I think he stepped up and made a lot of plays for us. But, you know, like I said about all the other guys, guys are just, you know, handling their business off the field and it's translating back to the field. Devin just going out, you know, taking care of his body, doing school, doing what he has to do. He understands the game. He's a smart guy and, you know, he understands the game of football. The nickel position is one of the hardest positions on the field. You know, I have to commend anyone that can play that position. That is a hard position. And, you know, Devin just been doing a great job for us. I'm excited to see what he can do for us Saturday. And, and in a normal season, I, I, I know there, you have sometimes those games that aren't the SEC games that you can use to kind of rest and recover your body. As a veteran, how important is it or, or how much of an emphasis are you giving the younger guys into uh, getting into the training room? And, and how much do you think of the season will be won by those who are able to take care of their bodies with that 10-game conference-only schedule? Uh, most definitely. This will be a very tough season, you know, uh, straight SEC games. But, you know, it's very important, like you say, the older guys are doing a great job of leading, you know, making sure guys are handling their business, encouraging guys to go out and, you know, take care of your body, get in the high stuff, do what we have to do. And, you know, I think it's very important from the – it starts with the older guys, and the older guys are doing a great job. And, you know, it's going to be a tough, long season. But, you know, we're fired up and we're ready for the opportunity. All right, let's move to Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman, and then we'll go to Daryl Bruffett and Gabe Bach. Buddy, how big a setback is it losing uh, one of your top linebackers and best receiver as far as reaching your goals? Well, it, it's it, it'll be a little different. You know, I've been playing – I played for a whole year next to Anthony Hines, and, you know, he was a great player. We built this confidence, you know, playing next to each other, the trust we had with each other. But, you know, like I say, football isn't a one-man sport. It's a team sport. You know, those guys in that linebacker room, man, I'll tell you <laughs> – We've been preparing to play. We're so fired up and ready to go. You know, we've been, you know, handling our business. And, you know, on the offensive side, Jamal was a great guy for us. You know, he made a lot of plays for us. But like uh, Kellen was saying earlier, you know, there's guys in that room that's been making great plays for us. And, you know, guys been preparing to play. And, you know, now it's their time to step up and shine and show what they can do for this team. And, you know, they're excited. We're excited. Coach Fish is excited. And guys are fired up about it. And are you watching uh... – other football games the last few weeks and you know, get so excited you headbutt your refrigerator or anything? <laughs> no, it, it, it's, it's kind of like I see other games playing, so I'm like, okay, now, now it's actually getting real. You know, the ball is starting to roll for real. So, you know, my, my, my heart is getting fired up and, you know, guys are getting fired up. It's like, oh, we're going to get started, man. I'm so excited. You know, guys are excited in the locker room. You can, you can feel it. You can feel it. Thank you, buddy. Yes, sir. All right, let's go to Daryl Bruffett, kbtx.com. I'll do that too. Hey, buddy, can you talk about Vanderbilt's offense and maybe just some of the challenges that they're going to present you guys uh, Saturday? Uh, yeah, uh, they have a, a new offense coordinator. So, uh, you know, we'll get together this week and talk about the game plan with Coach Elko. Coach Elko always have a phenomenal game plan for us. And, you know, guys be fired up about it, you know. So there's no, there's a, um, just for me, you know, just waiting on Coach Echo to present to us what he have, and, you know, we fired up for it and ready to go. 
and we'll wrap it up with Gabe Bach from TexAddicts.com. Yeah, buddy, what more can you tell us about Hansford's development? He moved over from that tight end slash receiver position, and then last year we saw some flash out of him. How was he able to come in here in August camp and, and take that position? Uh, you know, Hansford, he's a he's very athletic and he's very fast. I mean, he make he makes so many plays like just in practice. I just it's, I love to see it. You know, I think he did a great job. Of, you know, like I keep talking about guys preparing to play. He did a great job. And, you know, he he actually honed in onto the defense and you know he understands the game more. Coming from the offense side of the ball, it's very hard to 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 know offense for a long time and then trying to uh, try and learn defense. So, you know, I have to commend him on that. That's very hard and learning, uh, training your body, how to move different ways is different, you know? So, you know, I think he, he's done a great job for us and, you know, he's ready to play. He's ready to go. I talk to him all the time. You know, he understands the, the role that he have and, you know, the leadership he's going to have to accept now that Anthony Hines is gone. You know, he have some shoes to fill. He have to fill Anthony Hines shoes. And, you know, I think he's fired up and pumped up and ready to go. All right, buddy, that's all the questions. Thank you. Good job. Thank you. All right, we'll bring a nice Smith up. If you got questions, send, uh, send me a note via the chat function, a private note, and I'll get you on the queue. Hey, Anais, welcome to the media Zoom. Got some doing? questions for you. We'll start off with Gabe Bach from TexAx.com. What's happening, Anais? How you doing, Gabe? Doing well, man. Hey, what, what's been the key ingredient for your rise here since you changed the position to, to running back, but in particular in camp? By all accounts, you've been one of the very best football players on the entire roster in camp. What has really been the key to that, Anais? Um, well, first off, I want to thank you. Um, I appreciate the compliment. But um, for me, basically, it's just making sure that I'm going full speed every rep and making sure that I'm holding my teammates accountable to going full speed every single rep. So if we have a great scout team, Coach Fisher always talks about the scout team. If we have a great scout team, then we're going to have a great team just because of the way that we're going to practice. So I believe that's the key ingredient, just making sure that we go full speed every rep. Next question is from Zach Taylor from Brian Broadcasting. Hey, Anias. Um, you know, with Jamon having decided to opt out this year and one less receiver out there, did, have you approached Coach Fisher at all about maybe wanting more reps out wide, or is it a situation in which you're going to stay doing what you were doing in the backfield? Um, I believe Coach Fisher has a plan. Right now, he's still deciding on whether or not the best position is to keep me at running back or to motion me out wide. Um, it all depends on the game plan, the defense. So that's something for you to ask him, I guess. He said that you were staying at running back. I just didn't know if maybe it might be more opportunities for you at ride receiver now. Oh, well, shoes. I mean, if I was to ever go out at receiver, I feel like I have a great time. I love receiver. <laughs> All right, let's move on to Tyler Shaw from KBTX and then Daryl Bruffett. Kind of going off that, Anais, uh, even if you were to just, you know, stay at running back, how important, um, I guess, is your versatility to this offense? I mean, being able to catch the ball and um, do so many different things and with such a deep backfield, I mean, how important is that versatility for you guys to be successful? Um, I believe that is very important. I feel like if you have, you're not able to have enough athletes on the field. And with this offense, we have numbers of athletes that can get the ball in their hands and do something with it. So I feel like with me just adding on to that, it's, it's a number of options that we can do, not in a run, not only in a run game, but in a pass game, the option, everything. We have every opportunity to score with all the athletes that we have. Which of the, these young guys has impressed you the most? Um, I really like Darvon Hubbard, really the entire running back room. Darvon Hubbard, DeAndre Jackson, uh, Vaughn A. Chang, who's the receiver room. I really like um, 
Moose Muhammad. Moose has really been stepping up. Um, I'm, I ain't gonna lie. I'm like the entire freshman class. I told basically everybody in the freshman class that they all have unique talents and gifts that they can all bring in and help our team win. So I believe that everybody in that freshman class it has a great opportunity to make this team great. Thank you. Next question is from Daryl Bruffett at KBCX. Anias, I know you probably watched some games over the weekend um, and over the past couple of weekends. I know that you've seen that, you know, things are not the way they used to be on a normal Saturday in college football. Have you guys kind of thought about that and talked about it some as the, you know, you guys are going to have to make your own energy like you would on the road? Oh, no, yeah, we for sure definitely have talked about it. Um, I'm actually planning on bringing the energy off rip. As soon as I score, I got a little celebration. So I got to turn the entire offense up, the defense, all three phases. We just got to have fun with ourselves, playing with each other, and not have the crowd be a factor of why we won't play so well. So we have to just limit the distractions and be focused and locked in on our responsibilities. Thanks. Good luck. Thank you. All right, the last question on the queue is Travis Brown from the Brown College Station Eagle. Hey, Nias, how are you? I'm good. How are you, Travis? Doing well, doing well. Hey, uh, just not, not any individual player who has decided to opt out, but generally, what is that kind of like in the locker room? Do you hear rumblings of a guy talking about this? Do, they, do these guys usually kind of sit down and, and talk to the team? Generally speaking, when, when one of these players has decided to opt out, what does that kind of process look like uh, in the locker room? Um, that's kind of hard to say because some people, you know, they have things that don't necessarily pertain to football of the reasoning why they're opting out. So a lot of that can happen outside of the locker room. It can happen at home. Some things we may not know. And recently with Anthony Hines opting out, I was honestly shocked and surprised, especially with a week left of the game. But it is what it is. I have great, I mean, I have high, uh, what's the word? I guess you could say expectations for him. Um, I know he's going to do great things outside of football this year. So right now we just have the next man up. Whoever's next just got to come and step up. And we have a lot of guys that can do that. So Appreciate you. Thank you. All right. We got a couple of late ads. And so we'll go Gabe Bach and then Kirk Bowles. Yeah, and I, it just seems in these conversations with you that you just are so passionate about the game of football. What is it about the sport that makes you love it so much? Um, well, recently, I've actually been talking to a few of my roommates, and the game of football now is actually changed, and I'm pretty sure everybody can see that. And the way the world is going on right now, is not able to be the same as what it was in the past. When Ray Lewis, Ed Reed, and them was all in Miami, I felt like that was the greatest football time period ever just because it was the f game of football that everybody loved. So for me, every time I think about football, I always think of my Little League football team and me playing with the Missouri City Raiders. That's where it all started. And that's really why I really like the game of football so much just because it's an escape route for me, not – to get away from violence or all of that, but just to get my mind on something that everybody else is working toward. So basically my team, I know we're all working on one goal and I believe this is the greatest team sport that can ever be invented. And with all of us working towards the same goal, you can see all of the benefits through everybody. And I'm just glad to see it. So that's why I love it so much, just so I can build that brotherhood and be able to, say that I have somebody next to me that's going to work as hard as me, if not harder, to get to the same goal. All right, and we'll wrap it up with Kirk Bowles from the Austin American Statesman. Make it a good one, Kirk. <laughs> uh, can you describe this celebration you got planned? I'm curious how wild it's going to be so we can be prepared. Um, I guess you could say it just go a little something like this. And that's it. You're going to see, though. It's going to be live. <laughs> yeah. And uh, who would you compare your style to if we were 
you know, comparing you to another running back in college or pros, Anais? Um, I definitely have to say DeAnthony Thomas. Uh, I've been watching his highlights. I used to always watch his highlights as a kid. And looking at myself now, shoot, I'm in the same predicament. Both of us, we weren't the biggest. Now, he may be a little faster than me, I ain't going to lie. But <laughs> I'm pretty quick. But, shoot, I can get open in open field, whether I'm at receiver or at running back. And he had the natural ability to do both. So that's what I compare my game to. Thanks for that. Sure. All right, that's all the questions that we have for you. Cool, thank you. Thanks, Anais. And a thank you to everyone behind the scenes. You have Thanks a media for media for joining us. Thanks, Brad.